This is Open to Hope Radio, featuring Dr. Gloria Horsley and her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley, coming to you on behalf of the Open to Hope Foundation, dedicated to those who are looking for hope after loss. Now, here's Dr. Gloria. Welcome to Grief Relief. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley. Normally, uh, my daughter Heidi, Dr. Heidi Horsley, would be on the show with us, but we uh, did a couple of television shows uh, for you in Palo Alto, and they will be on our website. At So I'm kind of uh, flying alone today on the show. We've got a wonderful guest today, Krista Scalis, and she is going to talk about the things that has hap- have happened in her life and that has brought her to learn to laugh again. And she has experienced a messy, fearful, and ugly, soulful, wrenching side of grief. She's lost two friends to suicide, and she's written a book called Suicide Sucks, Moving Through the Pain of Suicide Loss and Learn to Laugh Again. So Krista, in this book, she provides 10 actionable steps to help people recover mentally and physically and spiritually from loss. So welcome to the show, Krista. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. My site is giggleon.com. It's based upon the phrase, get your giggle on, which means enjoy life and have fun. And the the mantra of the site uh, comes from a gentleman by the name of Jim Sims, who I met several years ago from Austin, Texas. We were dating. I was talking to him on the phone. He said, I'm going out with my buddy to get my giggle on. (laughs) It means have fun. Uh, This Jim Sims person... um, uh, encouraged me to create the website Giggle On in honor of a friend of mine, Jim Thompson, who I was friends with and who passed away by suicide in 2005. So Giggle On started as a way for me to talk about that and blog about my feelings and emotions about losing him, um, utilizing humor and laughter as a way to transcend that and also talk about you know, some of my past issues in the mental health world, touching firsthand. Tragically, uh, the gentleman that gave me the name of the website, Jim Sims, uh, several years after Jim Thompson killed himself, he also killed himself. Part of the things I try to do is also assist caregivers that are working in the mental health field. One of the things I think I can do best is help people diffuse stress and release stress and using laughter as a tool for them to release. Uh, laughter, like crying, gives us this ability to, to de-stress and uh, really transcend whatever problems we're having. So somebody's People that are on the phone, uh, suicide prevention hotlines, obviously they're under a lot of stress. Right. So part of what I like to try to do is offer them those services to, hey, I'm going to come in and give you a hand to relieve the stress. Okay, so here I am. I'm listening to the show, and I'm wondering, you've had two friends die from suicide. I'm wondering how you coped with that and and how I can cope with it if I've had somebody uh, just die by suicide. How did I handle it? Not well at first and for a long time. And I learned a lot of things through the process. And... As a, as a member of a big family, I've been to a lot of funerals over the years. There has been no death that has touched and ripped my heart out and made me physically ill than the death by suicide. And the, the gut-wrenching guilt and the what I call the woulda, coulda, shoulda complex can haunt you. And what all the listeners need to understand is that we've all done the best that we could under the circumstances and our loved one has made a decision that we do not agree with. And it's heart-wrenching, but you, you must work diligently to step aside and say, this was not my fault. And remove yourself from that because our loved ones made a choice to do what they did. And we don't agree with the choice and we know what it left in its wake. But try to release yourself from that guilt because ruining your life by letting yourself live in that state of guilt is robbing yourself of the joy is yours in your heart. You are here to be joyful and be hopeful and enjoy your life on this planet. So I I encourage you to to not live in the past of that pain and start looking at the things in life that bring you joy, that bring you some relief, that can put a smile on your face, because those are the moments, that hope, that's going to keep you through when all the rest of the stuff comes up. And it's horrible, and I am so sorry that you've been in a position to lose someone to suicide. It's horrible. All right, now I'm hearing you, and it's it, it, mentally I get it. How do I get some physical release? Do you have some ideas for me? Yeah, a couple of the ideas that I think are really one of the most important things is if you have the ability, step outside into nature, 
connecting yourself with nature is one of the best things you can do for several reasons. It gets you out of the physical environment that you're in. That might help some negative memories. The ability to go out, get some fresh air, to walk around, to increase and improve your circulation by a brief walk is going to do a lot to clear your mind. I'm also a huge advocate of exercise in some form. Not everybody can go run a 10K or wants to spend two hours at the gym. But go out and walk for 10 minutes, for 20 minutes. You know, Krista, I just want to interrupt you here because I think, you know, people actually get sick. People can die from grief. Did you know that walking 20 minutes a day decreases your risk of stroke by 50%? You know, and the other thing is, too, is part of the practice I do, and that's why the laughter and the humor component is so important. And when our loved one dies, the last thing we're probably doing is cracking jokes. A lot of us get engaged in, and I've done it, you get engaged in gallows humor. You find so it takes you a while to even start to smile again. Mm-hmm. One of the things you can do, too, is even the, the forced laughter practice, that's why I love it. I have, a, I have a sick sense of humor. My sense of humor is way out there. The laughter <laughs> practice engages you in hearty belly breath. So if you see anything in your area for laughter yoga, give it a shot because I'm going to move the phone away from my head a little bit here. If you start going, ha, 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 <laughs> okay, laugh for no reason. It's going to engage your belly muscles and your cardiovascular system is going to start to go into high gear. So one minute of hearty belly laughter, you're laughing at nothing is the same cardiovascular benefit of about 10 minutes on an exercise bike. By the way, when I hear you go, ha, 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 it makes me smile. <laughs> and I hope that you, when you're hearing us, you'll, you'll smile. Even the smile brings a change. Exactly. And, and the other beautiful thing is, too, is you can do the practice by yourself, or if you're with another person and they smile and laugh, you're utilizing mirror neurons. You don't know what's happening, but if somebody yawns, you're going to yawn. Okay? It's the same right. thing with laughter, and it's the same thing with smiling. So even if you don't feel like you can smile, you don't have to be forced to or laugh. But I encourage you to get yourself in an environment where others are smiling and laughing because you're still going to get some kind of psychological and even physical benefits from being in the environment. You know, when my son uh was killed in an automobile accident many years ago. My husband and I um, had heard about Tootsie, you know, um, the, uh, a funny movie. And so we decided we would go to the movie. And we knew we were going to laugh. So guess what? We went like like miles away to a movie that was way far away from our house. <laughs> so nobody would know who we were. For goodness knows, we didn't want to laugh. <laughs> Let anybody see us laughing. <laughs> Well, you know, the, the thing that I found, I felt really guilty for a long time after my first friend suicided, and it was horrible, and it took me forever to laugh. But I've learned, and, and if I have a free ebook that's available for folks on my website, and one of the things I talk about, there's a lot of tips in the ebook, but I know that he would not want me mired in grief and depression for an extended period of time. We do need to mourn, we need to address. We need to release. We need to cry and scream and do all that. We need to do that. It's part of the process because grief is a natural process. Okay? It's not something we need to be medicated for unless it goes on and on and on and on. But there's so many things we can do. If our loved one, if your loved one was sitting next to you right now, I feel in my heart they would say to you, please go have some fun. Go find something to lighten the load for 20 minutes or an hour. It'll be okay. Give yourself a break. Give yourself permission to enjoy because you're, you're honoring their life by enjoying your own. You know yourself best and tap into your intuition and say, if your intuition is telling you you need something, go seek. You will find what you are looking for. Start to seek. And part of this is also creating your own path. So maybe a psychic medium is somebody you might be interested in seeing. And maybe you're, no, 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 no. I'd rather go to a grief counselor. You've got to find what's right for you. And then sometimes it's like trying on shoes. One pair of shoes might fit really well. Like, you know what, this isn't working for me. It's okay. If it's not, try something else. I, I, lo I love your saying that, frankly, because um, I'm a psychologist and so is my daughter, Heidi. When my son was killed... Um, I had my three daughters who were younger. They were, you know, 18, 19, 14. And I, and of course, I was a therapist at the time. And I'm like, okay, everybody has to go to therapy, you know. And they all went and they all hated it. And every, all three of them quit. And um, 
you know, it's not for everybody. And I, I will also have to say that if you're a person who wants to get some counseling, make sure um, you find a good fit and don't be afraid to quit going to somebody that doesn't work. Uh, don't, you know, keep going for what works. One of the one of the things I found so, you know, and I'm not a I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I'm just a chick that went through some experiences and have learned from those experiences. One of the uh, women uh, that I befriended years ago lost her father and her brother's suicide. And she's now a psychologist out in California. Her name is Dr. Gretchen Kubaki. And she also counsels folks that have lost a loved one to suicide. So one of the things I might suggest to folks is if you do have the opportunity to, to seek professional help and you're able to find someone that has had that similar loss, I really think that that's going to help you because they can at least understand a whole different mindset because losing someone to suicide is different. It is different. Um, right. If you can find somebody that's already been through that and can understand, I truly believe that that will expedite your, your healing process. And there are some good groups like the American Association of Suicidology, and there are suicide walks, like you said you've been on. They're, they're you know, reaching out. If that's for you, I liked what you said. You know, if it's not for you, then find what is. You know, the other thing is, too, is the last section that I wrote in the ebook took me a few years to actually write, and I, and I want to share this with you quickly, which is unex- expect unexpected surprises. When we have a loved one that passes and passes away tragically like this, even if we have a hit, maybe something's going on, this is my experience. Things may start to happen after your loved one passes that you can't explain. And you might think you're going crazy, right? You might right. think, my these voices, I just see them. And my personal experience has been um, don't immediately write yourself off uh, for being off your rocker, so to speak. Because <laughs> your right. loved one may be trying to communicate with you. And I know for some people that might be very odd and very hocus-pocus and out there. It is my experience, and I, there's no one in the world that can explain some of the things that have happened to me. Yeah. My point is that we are energy, and when our bodies end, that is energy. So I just like to reassure folks that, you know, your loved one might be coming to you. If you're, if you're dreaming about them, they're sending love to you. And that's probably what all of them are trying to do. They're probably saying to you, hey, I'm really sorry, and I love you. And just remember this one thing, that the love that you have for your loved one will never die. It lives forever. Love will never die. Thanks for listening to our show today. And I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley. And we hope that you'll visit our website, opentohope.com, where you'll find uh, over 500 radio shows. You'll find thousands of articles. You'll find YouTubes. You'll find uh, television shows and uh, information that we hope will help you. We hope you'll tell your friends and family about our site and resources, and have a great day, and God bless. You've been listening to Open to Hope Radio, hosted by Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley. Like today's edition, all of our past programs are available on demand at opentohope.com, along with helpful articles, videos, resources, and links to help get you through the toughest time of your life. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and sign up for our monthly newsletter. Again, that's Open to Hope. Dot com. Check it out today. Then be sure to stop by next Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time when we'll be posting another edition of Open to Hope Radio. Remember, others have been where you are. They made it through, and you can too, as long as you're open to hope.